In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, St. Joseph, St. Anthony of Padua, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today in the Gospel, we hear about our Lord uh, working a miracle, and the people were amazed and impressed by the way he was able to command the demons to come out of this man who was possessed. And the people's response to our Lord was much different in this gospel passage today than the gospel passage if we were reading the ordinary time readings yesterday and not St. John the Baptist beheading. Uh, Yesterday the gospel would have been the one where he was in his hometown and he opened the scroll and he told them that today that this passage has been fulfilled in your midst and how they too at first were amazed at what he said, but then they started looking at his human origins and, and our Lord even prophesied to them. He said, you'll probably say to, to me, physician, heal yourself. You know, you'll be looking for, you'll be trying to find fault even in the Son of God. You know, you'll try to find something that you will not accept because you're not disposed. You, do, you whatever, however, it touched you were by my message or by my presence or even how much you liked the message that I gave you, you will still look for some reason for not to believe or not to accept me. And uh, the people uh, treated him with a certain, of course, they were uh, then taken aback because our Lord further uh, insulted them because he gave them two examples of where uh, God visited uh, not the, the chosen people, uh, you know, not those who thought they were uh, the elect of God, but rather how he went to two different pagans, the widow of Zarephath in the time of Elijah and the, uh, the, pro- the Syrian Naaman, the general who was cured of his leprosy. And they were stung to the heart, you know, because he kind of brought up these two examples where pagans were, were blessed by God when, when the Israelites, when the chosen people were, they didn't receive any grace from God because their faith was, wasn't sufficient. They, there was more faith in these two pagans than in all of Israel. And that we know in the passage from that gospel, they wanted to throw him off a cliff. So angry were they. Whereas today, the people are amazed and they're still kind of wondering, you know, who is this man? How can he do this? How can he command with such authority? And it may be that slowly, you know, they are being enlightened, but yet they have not yet the spirit of God to help them to recognize the, the profound truth of what they have witnessed. Even in the first reading today, we were told that, you know, that uh, the spirit of, we've been given the spirit of God so that we can know the things of God. That's one of the things about, you know, the indwelling of the Holy Trinity that we receive at baptism is that we have this abiding presence of the Holy Spirit who is teaching us things without us maybe even desiring them. You know, he's instructing us He's enlightening us, especially, you know, as most especially when they're in a state of grace. And the more we actively uh, cooperate and seek that relationship with the Holy Spirit, the more, of course, you will be enlightened. There are many people who just kind of are baptized and they're, they don't give it any attention. And so therefore that relationship is not so developed uh, yet the Holy Spirit is there until, you know, he's, if he's driven out by mortal sin. But he is there abiding with them and he's enlightening them. And sometimes we take for granted, I think, or we become so used to this being in this relationship, you know, especially if we've been baptized as an infant. 
we, we become so, uh, this abiding presence of the Trinity and especially this movements of the Holy Spirit, we may uh, mistake it for being something else. Maybe just, you know, a, a good thought that we had when it really it was the Holy Spirit who was enlightening us. Uh, it's, it's, it's so much a part of us because of this um, union of this grace that God gave us at baptism that it becomes kind of connatural. We just don't even recognize sometimes maybe the Holy Spirit and its, and its workings in our soul. And sometimes, we, and many times, people are not aware of it. And I can think of the example of um, uh, Mother Mary Frances, I think it is, the poor Claire nun who started the, a Colatine monastery in New Mexico. Famous poor Claire a uh, sister who wrote many things about spirituality and founded uh, several monasteries, but her story was uh, one of a rather unusual uh, entrance into the things of God in the sense that her father was an atheist and he wanted to indoctrinate her into atheism. He wanted to make sure that she would never ever hear God even being proclaimed or hear his name ever. And so he was living in Africa and he thought that there in this pagan land, you know, she would never hear about God and uh, he would never let her be exposed to anything Christian. And what he didn't know was that uh, either her, his mother, the grandmother of the child, or even his, I can't remember who it was, baptized this little girl as an infant before he took her away to this pagan Africa. And so she, uh, grew up not even being aware of it, but the Holy Spirit was was moving in her soul. And even though she wasn't being taught about God, her father wouldn't let her be exposed about the things of Christianity. He was surprised one day when she said to him that she was she believed in God, and he was amazed because he had done so much to try and wipe out or prevent her from ever hearing anything about God. And, uh, you know, that shows you that there really is a real abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in our souls at baptism. And we can see that if we have this relationship with the Holy Spirit, if we foster it by having devotion to the Holy Spirit, uh, invoking his aid, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. If we show that love and devotion even in a, you might say, in an indirect way by our Marian devotion because, of course, she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit and will help us to foster this relationship with the Holy Spirit even more surely because, as the spiritual writers say, Our Lady was only moved by the Holy Spirit. And we want to pray that, you know, we have that same kind of a pre a relationship with the Holy Spirit that, we allow him to move us and to guide us in everything we do, that we have that um, deep and intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And um, Our Lady will be the key to that. So that, you know, the more we do live in that spirit of the Lord, we will truly know the things of God. We will know as God knows things. You know, people who don't have this gift, uh, the light of faith, especially that comes from the grace of baptism are like people who are seeing black and white. They don't see color. And uh, that you might say that those who are baptized, they are given an extra light to see things in a different way and, uh, profound the, and can see the profound meaning of things which other people just pass over and don't even recognize. And it's sad to see so many baptized Christians and baptized Catholics especially that are living as if they don't have the Holy Spirit, who have adopted the spirit of the world, who live as if, you know, they're, they're, they're stupid when it comes to the realities of even simple truths as life begins at conception, or that, you know, the Ten Commandments, which are the natural law written in our hearts, one doesn't need the Holy Spirit to know those truths, but God has given us the Holy Spirit to even more, you know, that the Holy Spirit gives testimony to these things. And yet there are so many Catholics today who live like they are pagans. And that is sad because they are, have this great dignity and this great 
um, nobility of soul given to them by baptism. And we need to pray because, of course, that relationship is, was established at baptism. Maybe they, is, the Holy Spirit has been driven out because of mortal sin. But there's still hope for those baptized souls that they can once again regain that relationship. And we need to pray that those who are uh, not living as they ought to, and maybe even ourselves at times, when we live as if we don't have this relationship with the Holy Spirit, that we too will you know, be renewed and uh, re reintroduce ourselves to this relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit to guide us and to enlighten us and to instruct us in the very depths uh, and, and the very um, deep uh, presence of God and all the things that he wants to do and is doing in our lives today. Let us ask Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, especially to help us to be people who truly live and abide in his spirit and uh, truly are moved by his spirit, like St. Anthony and all the saints who truly were spirit-filled uh, men and women of God because they fostered this relationship with the Holy Spirit and, uh, and lived this intimate union by cooperating with his grace and asking for his assistance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.